Blessings, 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 blessings to each and every one of you. I welcome and I send blessings to you from on high. And I thank you for tuning in with me to another episode of The Right Now Word. I'm so excited that you have taken time out of your busy schedules to tune in to hear what the Lord is speaking to his people. Yes. I tell you, already we're in the month of September. I remember last year speaking about what God was going to do in September of 2018 and what that number nine meant. I talked to you guys about that the number nine meant new birth. I told you that God was birthing something out last year, that God was birthing something through each and every one of you all and that it was your time to give birth and that you had to birth out the promises of God and that many of you were pregnant and many of you were experiencing pregnancy symptoms from January 2018 to, um, to September 2019 and it was your time to birth. So tonight I come to you and I want to tell you that um, I'm proud of most of you all because you have birthed that baby out but some of you all, you're long overdue, you're still carrying that baby and God sent me to tell you that in this season, in this year, if you don't birth that baby out this year, Hallelujah. This year, if you don't birth that baby out this year in 2019, hallelujah, that you got to be able to start that thing, at least start it, that if you don't birth that baby, that baby is going to my God, be still born. That means that you carried it too long and that because you carried it too long that and you didn't allow it to be birthed in this season. And God is saying that, you know, because you didn't obey his word that you've allowed that baby to die inside of you. How many of you know that many people have allowed their dreams and visions and what God wants to do in their life to die inside of them? And this is the season, my friends, you got three months left. October, November, December to start it. God is just simply saying start the thing. I'm not asking you to complete it, but I'm asking you to start it. He said I've sent you midwives. I've sent you encouragers. I've sent you motivators. And he said what is it? Why haven't you yet gotten up and walked into the plan that I have for your life? Hallelujah. So in this season, again, I'm talking to you in the ninth month in 2019. Telling you that birth that baby baby out. Go ahead and birth that baby. Go ahead. That baby is ready. That baby has, has grown to its full maturity inside your womb and it's pounding. So the pains that you're feeling now is the baby kicking you saying, let me out of here. Let me out of here. So what you're going through now, the hurt and the pain and the ache is because you are not obeying the voice of the Lord, which told you to birth the baby out. And so because you're not obeying the voice of the Lord, you're going through not pregnancy pains, but you're going through the baby being upset and being uh, the baby be being kind of not just upset but he's a, a little disappointed and he's like let me out of here that vision is like come on um put it on paper make it plain do something get up act because faith without works is dead how many of you know that Faith without works is dead. You can have the faith all day long, but if you ain't working that thing, if you ain't getting up doing something with that idea, doing something with that talent, that gift, that skill that the Lord has given you, then this dead. And that's why I said that the baby is going to be still born dead because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. I'm not coming to put a curse on you. I'm not coming to, to speak uh, anything negative on you, but I come to put some fire under you. Hallelujah. To make you get up and do what it is that God has told you to do. You got three months left. How many of you know that this is the year that it got to get started? This is the year that you got to put your hand to the plow, that this is the year that you got to put your feet. Hallelujah to the ground and get up and start walking and start 
acting. Stir up the gift that is in you. Hallelujah. You got to stir up the gift. Hallelujah. You can't be thinking about and, and, and counting on anybody else in this season to stir it up for you because God told you last year in 2018 about him doing a new thing and the new thing in 2019 was that he was birthing something out of you. Something so great. Something so wonderful. Something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. He spoke to you and told you that everything you need is inside of you. And so I come to tell you on tonight, on this Thursday night, to tell you that God is saying you got three more months. He said that he's the author and the finisher of it. You just have to start on it. You just have to take a step. Hallelujah. In this season, you just have to take a step and you have to start on it. And that's the word for most of you all. But then I got a word for all of you all. Hallelujah. For the people who have gone out there and have taken that step and who is believing God, God simply told me to tell you that this is the season, hallelujah, of the rainbow. I said this is the season of the rainbow. A lot of times when we hear the rainbow, when we hear of the rainbow, people who don't know the actual symbolism of the rainbow, who do, who do not know what the rainbow really mean, they have been deceived and bamboozled and thinking that it meant something else, something evil. But how many of you know that whatever God say is good, the devil come and try to mimic and make it bad? How many of you know that the rainbow was a good thing? That the symbolism of the rainbow meant that God is coming to deliver on his promise? How many of you know that when we first read the Bible and we hear about the rainbow, we hear it in the book of Genesis when God came to Noah after the flood and said, Noah, this sign that you see in the sky, this rainbow is my covenant to you, is that I promise that I'm making to you that I will never ever do this again. I'm coming to make a promise to you to let you know that I'm making a covenant agreement with you. I'm making a promise with you that the rainbow is a civilization that I've made a promise. And then if you read the book of Ezekiel, after Ezekiel started talking about the vision that he had of the four wheels, the Bible says Ezekiel saw my God. He saw somebody. He saw the Lord in all his glory and it was a rainbow. Hallelujah. He saw a rainbow and it was God's face as a symbol and the symbol of it, it meant the glory of God. So in, in Genesis, God talked about the rainbow being the promise and Ezekiel, God the, the prophet Ezekiel said the rainbow was the glory of God but then in Revelations John said he saw an angel and an angel that he saw he had fire under his feet and then the angel that he saw had a rainbow hallelujah above his head and he said the angel was coming to fight hallelujah on your behalf so God gave me the, the revelation of that and God told me to tell you that he's coming to deliver your promise in this season he said you ain't got the struggle you ain't got the fight for it he said that I'm sending you your promise I'm coming to deliver your promise to you and not only that he says I'm taking you to another dimension where you're going to experience my glory and then not only that he said and not only that I'm sending the angel hallelujah to come and fight on your behalf and that God will arise and your enemies will be will be scattered in this season you don't have to fight the battle that the battle belongs to Jesus he said I'm sending you supernatural help John said he saw an angel and it was a rainbow and a rainbow means promise covenant I'm coming to deliver I'm sending you help I'm bringing you the angel to come forth and fight for you and 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 bring you your promise hallelujah to deliver you your promise hallelujah so God is speaking to the church he's speaking to the people of God in this season and saying that you don't have to be dismayed you don't have to be disappointed that when I make you a promise I'm sure to deliver on my promise. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm sure to do it. He said that I'm not like man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. If I make you a promise, know that I'm well and able to deliver on that promise. So I come to tell you on tonight that the God that delivered the promise to, um, to the, the um, Noah after the ark, that the God 
that showed the promise to Ezekiel. <clears throat> a rainbow, hallelujah, that the God that showed himself through the rainbow to John is coming to visit you and show you the rainbow as well. For this is the season of the covenant keeping God to come through and provide you a breakthrough, to come through and provide you your promise, to deliver you your promise, hallelujah. I'm, when I think about the promise, I think about how the children of Israel had to fight for the land that God had given them, how they had to fight for that land and how, you know, they had to fight for their territory, something that God had already promised them and God told me to tell you that don't look at that situation. God said in the new thing that I'm doing for you, he said, you ain't got to fight for this promise. It's already yours. It already belongs to you. You just need supernatural strength. You just need supernatural help and that's why I'm sending the war angel. Hallelujah. Mighty in battle will fire under his feet that will burn up everything that's not like God, that's not like him, that will burn up every demonic spirit, that will burn up every witch or warlock that will try to stop you from getting your promise. Hallelujah. Somebody better do some cockwheels and flips. I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season. I'm excited that God is going to deliver you your promise in this season. You ought to just stop what you're doing right now and give God some praise, give him some glory, Give him some honor and thank him because he can't lie. He shall not lie. I know some of you are thinking that January has passed. February, March, April, May, June, July, August. And here we are in September. God, what's going on? And God simply told me to tell you, do not be dismayed. I'm a promise keeping God. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. He said, I cannot lie. I will not lie. I shall not lie. If I say I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you. If I say I'm going to heal you, I'm going to heal you. He said, if I say I'm going to provide, I'm going to provide. If I say I'm going to save your family, I'm going to save your family. You just got to know that you know that you know, know, know that I am the God that created these heavens. And if I could create the heavens and not, if I could create the earth, then how do you think or why do you doubt that I can't bless you and that your cup run of over and that you experience an overflow in this next season? Some of you have been praying. You know what it is that you've been praying about. You know what it is that God has promised you. And God said that he's coming to deliver on your promise. A lot of times when we think about the rainbow, in this, in this new generation, when they think about the rainbow, they think about something evil that has been attached to it because they have not been taught. And God sent me to tell you, to, to teach the younger generation that there's nothing wrong with the rainbow, that the rainbow is a symbolization and a symbolism of God and his promise. But we know that, and I talked about it earlier, that the enemy come to come and steal kill and to destroy anything that God say is good the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and to mimic and to make whatever God said is good and to something bad so we know that we have to confirm that we have to contend with the enemy and presenting rainbows and making people think that that rainbow is something evil. But we as leaders, we that know the truth, have to begin to help the next generation and to let them know it's okay to wear a coat of rainbows because it's a good thing. And the good thing is that it means that my promise is on the way. You can wear your coat of many colors like Joseph did. The coat of many colors just simply meant that he was favored by God, that God had chosen him. And I come to tell you that you can wear your coat of, of a rainbow and when somebody asks you what you're doing wearing that rainbow coat you just simply say because God made me a promise and I'm standing on the promises of God and I will not waver I will not look to the left I will not look to the right but I will stand on the word of God and I will trust in the Lord until I die how many of you are believing God for that promise to be delivered how many of you are believing God I come to tell you on tonight that God has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for your life. And he has given each and every one of us a promise.
promise. Yes, he has promised you in the book. He's promised you benefits to serve in him. He said he'll give you. Hallelujah. He will renew your, your youth like the eagle's youth. He will give you. He will make sure that you are healed. Hallelujah. He will give you beauty for your ashes. It's all sorts of promises in the Bible. He said that if you serve him and seek him first and all his righteousness, then he will add all these things unto you. Hallelujah. That means if you put him first, if you lift up the name of Jesus, that he will ensure that you walk in your wealthy place, but you gotta put him first. Hallelujah. There are so many promises in the Bible and the book of Deuteronomy. He says that he will bless every, every place that your feet Stop and tread upon. Hallelujah. That if you put him first. Hallelujah. He will save your whole household. That's a promise. These are promises from the Lord, my friends. And so, yes, I declare and I decree that all you have to do is read the word and see the promises that God has for you and your family. Glory. So, I'm excited about tonight and telling you that God is about to make promise. On your rainbow. Because the rainbow is shining through the clouds in this rainbow season. What do I mean by it's a rainbow season? This is the season that the promises of God are going to start coming to pass. People are about to start experiencing the manic full blessings of the Lord. You're about to experience God on in a whole nother dimension. That's what it means by when Ezekiel said that he saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we need his glory? How many of you know that we need to be in his presence? How many of you know that we can't do nothing without the presence of the Lord? Without be, without having his glory? As somebody said for his glory I would do anything. I don't know about you but I got to have the glory of the Lord. It's a promise. The rainbow signifies that in this season, not only will you experience his glory on a whole nother level, but you will, hallelujah, his glory will not leave from you. He will go before you, hallelujah, he will go before you and surround you in his glory. It's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord and feeling the Lord God and not just feeling, but knowing that God is with you. How many of you know that having the glory of the Lord and feeling the glory of the Lord is better than anything? And so Ezekiel said he saw the glory glory of the Lord and it was a beautiful sight glory to God so not only did God promise and make a covenant with Noah and you he also promised and promised you that his glory would not leave you in this season glory to God that means that when the glory falls do you know what happens when the glory falls do you know what happened when the glory is on you that no sickness no disease I'm telling you that anything to try to come up against you, it's not going to harm you. It will not prevail. No weapon that is formed, that it will not prosper. Any error that is thrown at you, that is pointed at your back, your face, your front, your side, it will not come nigh thee. Because God and all of his angels that he's sending to warn your behalf are going to drop them. Hallelujah. Before they even get 10 feet of you. Glory to God. So I'm excited about this new month. I'm excited about you experiencing the glory of God. I'm excited about your promise. And I'm excited about your warn angel. Do you know how important it is to have a warn angel? So not only did God show one rainbow, but God showed three rainbows. He said, I promise you in the first Rainbow when he spoke to Noah that I'm making a covenant with you and I promise you I will not bring harm to you or your people again. Then he said he then he showed Ezekiel a rainbow and as Ezekiel saw the glory of God. So that was the second promise. Hallelujah. And then he saw the angel and Reverend John saw the angel <clears throat> in Revelation. So that was a third promise. So God made you three promises. Amen. The first one is that he's going to be with you. He will not harm. He will not allow harm to come to you. The second, the, the first one is that he's going to be with you and he will not allow harm to come to you. The second one is that he will allow his glory to overshadow you and no sickness, no disease, no hurt, no pain will come nigh thee. And the third 
one was my friends that he's going to send an angel to walk on your behalf. So all you got to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Some of you have been fighting the battle too long. You've been fighting for your healing. You've been fighting for prosperity. You've been fighting for your children. You've been fighting, hallelujah, to stay above ground, above water. But God sent me to tell you that you ain't got to fight no more. You ought to be doing some cockwheels and flips right there. I said, you ain't got to fight no more because the battle belongs to the Lord. So God said, I'm giving you three promises and I'm coming to deliver on all three of those promises. I'm excited about your promise. I'm excited about your breakthrough on tonight. Then I was talking to the Lord. And the Lord said, told me to tell you, I've been talking to you guys about that corn. I've been talking to you guys about that green grass. I've been talking to you guys and letting you know about that corn and that green grass. And God said that he's coming to deliver. The corn was stood for provision. And the green grass, tall grass, and I told you that stood for prosperity. God said in this season, he said, I made some of you a promise that I was going to make you multi-millionaires. And I was going to bring you great success. He said, I'm coming to deliver on that promise. He said, I told some of you all that I was going to heal your body of an incurable disease. He said, I'm coming through to make good on that promise. He said, I told some of you that your children will have be able to go through college and not and not have, be in debt and not be have student loans. He said, I'm coming to make good on that promise. He said, I told some of you that I was reconciling relationships. And he said, I'm coming to make good on that promise. He said, I told some of you that I was going to allow you to help you. That I was going to put up the dreams and visions in your spirit to go out and build businesses and, and build ministries. And he said, I'm coming to deliver on that promise. I love God because the promises of God are either nay or amen. Either you, he's going to do it or he's not. And nine times out of ten, a perfect ten, if he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. You can't, dis God said in this season, you can't even disqualify yourself. He said because this promise has my DNA all over it. Meaning that this promise is to allow the unbelievers to see that your labor was not in vain. This promise is to allow all the people who laugh and mock you to see that your God hand was in it all alone. This promise, hallelujah, was for all the unbelievers and the doubters to see that God is still healing his people. He's still delivering his people. He's still setting his people free. He said, I'm coming to send you the rainbow. He said, not that, that to send you the rainbow because he said, you've seen the rainbow, but I'm coming to uh, deliver on the rainbow. I'm coming to open your eyes so you will be able to see. He said, I'm coming to take the blinders off your eyes so you will be able to see in the spirit again and see that my hand is in it. My hand was, is on your life. And that ever since your mother had you in her womb, ever since I placed you in the womb of your mother, I knew the plans that I had for you. I have great plans for you. I have awesome plans for you to bring you to your expected end. He said, I do not make a promise. I do not plan a life without ensuring that I finish and complete that thing that I started. He said that you are a wonder. He said that you are a chosen vessel. You are a royal priesthood. You are his most, most prized possession. Hallelujah. And you are the apple of his eye. And he said, will he not create you and not care for you? Hallelujah. Somebody better shout. He said, do I create people? And not and do I fashion you, create you, fashion you for you not to prosper? He said, no, I'm not that type of God. He said, I come. He said, I create you. I fashion you so that I can prosper you. Hallelujah. I said, he said, he create you. He fashioned you so that he can prosper you. I said, he created you. He fashioned you so that he can prosper you. Hallelujah. Because you're made in his image. Do you know what it means to be made in the image of God? God is awesome. He's amazing. He's creator. Hallelujah. He's majestic. You got the same qualifications inside of you. I come to spend these last few minutes just to encourage you and to let you know that you are good for the promise. You are good for the promise. Don't worry about your past. Don't worry about the state that you're in because God already spoke that it has this promise that he's going to deliver has nothing to do with 
Hallelujah, the state that you're in. You may be thinking that I that you got on filthy rags, but I remember that God spoke to Joshua. He spoke to Joshua and he spoke to the angel and said, take those dirty garments off of Joshua and robe him with garments of righteousness because this is a brand that was plucked out of the fire. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be a brand that was plucked out of the fire. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he don't, he looked beyond my faults. Hallelujah. And he saw my need. I'm so glad that he's not like man that look at the outer appearance. I'm so glad he looked at the heart and he sees that in my heart that I want to do right, that I want to do right. I want to do his will. I want to um, get my promise. I want to serve him. I want to, to make him happy. I'm so glad that he don't look at what, what some of the things that I do on the outside or he don't judge me how I look, what color skin that I'm in, hallelujah, what size am I, what color hair do I have, but he look and say that's my child, I form, I fashion and I'm coming to deliver her promise, I'm coming to give her her promise, I remember that when I was in Brussels in, in 2004, November 2004 a song kept playing on the radio over and over and over and over again that we need to hear a word from the Lord and the lady Vicky Wine gave her testimony that she had been going through a lot because she'd been thinking about her past and God told her, he said let me tell you that your ladder should be greater than your past glory to God, he said look don't worry about what you're going through, your ladder should be greater than your past and the word of God spoke to me and said the Lord, your ladder should be greater than your past and I said well Lord you know I have been through some things but it ain't you know it's been hurtful but my goodness he said I'm preparing you to go through what you got to go through. But I come to remind you. On tonight. That your ladder should be greater than your past. Meaning that I'm preparing you for what you got to go through. What you had to go through. But I want you to remember the rainbow. That when you see the rainbow. Hallelujah. Know that the promise is near. Know that the promise is. That it's the season of the rainbow. So I come to motivate somebody. And encourage you on tonight. You might be going through a mighty time. You might be wondering. What she talking about the rainbow. I ain't seen no rainbow. I ain't seen even a cloud in the sky. I come to tell you that. You know remember. Remember when a prophet Elijah sent the servant said, what do you see? He went one time, didn't see nothing. He went two times, didn't see nothing. He went three times, didn't see nothing. He went four times, didn't see nothing. He went five times, didn't see nothing. He went six times, didn't see nothing. But the Bible says the seventh time, hallelujah, he said, I see a fist. A, cl a cloud the size of a man's fist. And the Bible says that shortly after it rained. Glory to God. And that's what God is saying. He said the rainbow is there. He said I'm taking the blinders off your eyes so you can see the beautiful colors of the rainbow. He said because this is the season of the rainbow. This is the season that I come to deliver for you. I come to save your children. I come to deliver your family members. I come to prosper you. This is the season that I come to reconcile. This is the season that I come to deliver on my promise of the rainbow. He said, I showed Noah and gave him a promise, a covenant keeping promise. He said, I showed Ezekiel the glory of the promise. And then I sent an angel with a rainbow to let Ezekiel know, to let Noah know, to let John know, to tell my people that I'm coming to fight for them. And no devil, no demon, no warlock will be able to stop the purpose and the plan that God has for your life. You've been listening to The Right Now Word. God bless you and have a good night. Thank you for listening to The Right Now Word. If you are listening and you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life, I submit to you that he loves you so much. He wants to come into your heart. If you will go to Romans 10 9, the Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then my friend, you will be saved. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Right Now Word.